Hello YouTube! For those of you who don't know me, my name is Flackjack, and welcome back to Sly Cooper and the Devious Raccoonus. Last time we beat Sir Raleigh in the Tide of Terror and got him back back one another one of the pages from the Thievius Raccoonus. This page contained a new ability for Sly, the Spire Jump, coined by Ryoichi Cooper. All set to go to Mesa City. And of course, as Bentley says, we're ready to go to Me Mesa City, but one thing I like to point out here is that Every time you open up a new world, Murray's blocking the next one. And always doing something different, like this time he's listening to music on a Walkman and dancing around. But without further delay, let's just... Yeah, go to Mesa City. Shut up, Bentley. Let's just go. It had been a while since I'd been back in the U.S. Next up... The notorious mugshot. Ruthless muscle of the fiendish thigh. What he lacked in brains, he definitely made up for in brawn. Turns out he wasn't always that way. He grew up as the run of the litter. A neighborhood weakling. The only friends he could turn to were usually found on the big screen. It was there that he spotted his first gangster, and he knew instantly that that's what he wanted to be. He spent the rest of his youth working real hard to get there, fueled on his dreams of great power and respect. With enough perspiration, he realized that dream. He'd become a hard-boiled, street-brawling, tough-as-nails gangster, ensuring that he'd never be kicked on or pushed around again. Mesa City, huh? I've always wanted to go to that thriving American boom town. Sly Cooper in Sunset Snake Eyes. Okay, so here we are off to a rocky start. And already, Mugshot seems to have quite a better backstory than Sir Raleigh. I mean, seriously, Sir Raleigh's backstory was that he got into crime because he was bored. Hey, Sly, I thought you said Mesa City was going to be loud and busy. This looks more like a ghost town. Something's happened. Where is everyone? I don't know, but it's starting to give me the creeps. What do you say we take off? And miss all the fun? Besides, I want to try out that new move I got from Raleigh's section of the Thievius Raccoonus. You mean the Ninja Spire Jump? Yeah. Do me a favor and read me the instructions again. To land safely upon diminutive points, Liebeth Lively impresses the triggering device with the round geometrical object emblazoned upon it. So jump and hit the circle button to land on narrow spots. That's a rough translation. Oh, well, anyways, uh, sorry to divide Verge here, but, um, why is that page written like that if it was by Ryoichi Cooper? I mean, I don't know. Honestly, my theory was that it was probably edited and translated by Sir Gallus Cooper, hence ye old butchered English on that page. But anyway, as I was saying earlier, Mug I think Mugshot has a better backstory than Sir Raleigh at the very least, basically being picked on as a kid. And uh, wanting to become a gangster so he can get back at his enemies. Anyways, we just got killed by a dog. N a non-anthropomorphic one, by the way. Yeah, basically all the enemies in, in this chapter of the game are dogs. And uh, which also brings up a rather weird, weird thing I see about the game. Basically, as you can see, pretty much all the characters in the Sly Cooper franchise are anthropomorphic animals. But at the same time, there also appear non-anthropomorphic animals, like that dog that killed me earlier. Uh, just something I always found kind of weird. But anyways, there's actually a, uh, a uh, split path here that has some bottles for us to collect. Other than that, it's pretty much useless, but you pretty much have to go this way if you, if you want to go for 100%, because after all, it's, what, it's the path that got the bottles. So anyways... So anyways, uh, yeah, I forgot to mention, 
mention the spire jump. Well, aside from the entry for it, that, like I, like I said, might have been edited by Sir Gallus Cooper. And, anyways, if, yeah, if you like, see like a, like a. What's with those okay. Lights? The latest in high tech security: electronic floor sensors. Step on them, and you're a godder. Nice touch. They're safe to walk on while flashing, but it also means they're about to switch to a different sector. Okay, anyways, as I was always saying, basically, Ryuichi's Spire Jump. You can basically use that if you like to see a sharp point, and Sly, press the circle button near it, and then Sly can just, just land on it with safety. Now, anyways, as Bentley was talking about here, this is a new type of laser wire wire that starts appearing the laser floors basically whenever whenever it's not flashing it's safe to walk on but when it does flash it means it's about to switch and you should get out of the way pronto anyways let's keep moving on get past this dog which throws cars as a weapon nice and also down here is a bottle that is easily missable <laughs> good thing I got it there Got some more balls over here, this, here, and I gotta say, this chapter is uh, a lot better at hiding the balls than these other ones. Oh yeah, no, got some more of those dogs. Gotta dodge these smashers so we don't get crushed. And over there is going to be our safe that we'll get once we get all the bottles. As you, as you can see, there's an enemy behind this, but it's not gonna scare me in the slightest. I've played through this level before, like on my own several times, and I definitely know what's coming up. Got some more balls up here on this on this electromagnet. And some more smashers. <laughs> and we got got another one of those dogs that throws a ball and chain at us. And here we have some something rather interesting here. These swaying train cars that have these security lasers in them. I even liked how those lasers in that, yeah, those lasers up there, that keep swaying along with the car. Oh, and it's also got, got the laser floors with them, so there's that to watch out for. Anyways, got one more of these dog mooks. Two more of those bottles, and hopefully this safe mice. Oh, well, looks like we're missing one. Anyways, let's collect this treasure key right here, thus finishing the level. But let's not move forward just yet. Hold on for a second right here. Uh, uh okay, I'm gonna unlock the gate, but anyways, uh, I'm gonna go try looking for that last bottle. Meet you guys there. Oh, there it is. <laughs> just, it was just outside when I first went by. Anyways, it... It was rather convenient as it was on our way back to the safe. Well, I'll meet you up there. Gonna cut to save us the trouble. And here we are. Let okay, we don't even need Bentley here. I'm just gonna enter it right near. It's what three, one, four. <laughs> Got that from uh, practicing the level first, so I can better my commentary. Uncovered Rob McCooper's patented explosive hat technique. Use the triangle button to toss your cap, then use the triangle button again to detonate it. Better back off to a safe distance first. Okay, so we got ourselves a new technique turning our own hats into a mine. Basically, just press the triangle button to just throw it, back off a safe distance, and press it again to make it blow up. Basically, you can just drop it on any unsuspecting enemies, and then, and then, turn them into a pile of dead. But anyways, that's all for this level, so let's go meet us back at the entrance. The exit, I mean. See you guys then. Okay, so now we've gotten past that level, and now we're on Mugshot's Toys. And... Uh, if we go around here, Bentley will give us something. Well, this mugshot certainly isn't shy. Okay, so we know he's here somewhere, but how are we supposed to find him? 
Mesa City is a big place! Given that he's a bulldog, it seems only reasonable to assume that he chose to live in a giant fire hydrant. That's specious. That's some sound logic, Sly. Now you just need to find a way to break into the building's base. Oh, I'm sure I'll think of something. Okay, so anyway, right off the bat, we've got the flashlight guard right over there, prowling the area. Let's just get him out of the way before he shoots us with a firework from that gun. And... Okay, so anyways, after Mugshot interrupted us right there, this car, which is constantly spinning its wheel, is is basically how we're gonna get in through there. And also, yeah, I just I just showed you during Mugshot's little spiel there that uh, if you constantly joggle the toy joystick back and forth, it makes that noise. And I think it's pretty much funnier than than when Sly's doing it in the barrel. But anyways, let's go off to get some more treasure keys. Starting with this train segment right here. And that holograph is where we're supposed to go. Murray's Big Gamble. Murray is in position to make a run for this key. Okay, so what do I do? Provide some covering fire for him with that blasting station. Sweet. Use the left analog stick to aim and press the square button to fire. I'll do my best. Okay, so this is one of two times in the game where basically not Sly, but Murray is going for the for the key. Time to move, Sly. Basically have to Murray. shoot rockets to basically defend him. Yeah, as Murray keeps running like the coward he is. Seriously, he runs at the side of every single enemy. I mean, it's pretty much amazing that in 2 onwards, he's actually afraid of nothing and... and serves as the brawn of the group. Oh yeah, and you and as you can see, there's there's the, the horseshoe on his back. He basically gets any charms that Sly has. And also be careful with your rockets as they can also hurt Murray as well. Okay. Saw saw guard back there. Ah, ah yeah. Also watch out for hazards as they might hurt Murray and uh, take away one of your charms. Good thing I had a gold charm which is two extra hits. And if I'm correct, that door has a uh, has some explosive barrels. Basically trying to fake you out into shooting it and damaging Murray. Because this level is a jerk. Like how he waves the sly every time. And here we'll see more of the flashlight guards. And you have to react quicker because they run faster and may shoot Murray. I'm almost done! You know, why am I uh, overreacting there? After all, Murray does have the uh, Hey! Da, 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 da. Guard! Guard! We did it! Anyways, anyways, Murray got the uh, key for us, and that means that there's, there's just one more before we can get inside the complex. Okay. If you're stuck behind this area, this train conveniently tilts your way so you can get your way back through. And we're just gonna make our way way across this bridge and away from this this flashlight guard so that he doesn't shoot us. Nah. Getting that guard out of the way is a lot easier than the than the flashlight guards, because at least they don't fire stuff at you. And we'll go across this broken bridge here to go on to the next area. Remember how I said in that summary minigame in the first chapter that there was one particular minigame that a lot of people hated? Well, this is that minigame. Once again, 
What's going on down there? Well, I drove to this hot dog stand for a quick snack, and the next thing you know, I'm getting challenged to a race by these gangster dogs. Is there a key in it for the winner? Yeah, three times around the track for a key. It's all you, man. Drive the van with the left analog stick. And if you manage to pick up any nitro power-ups, you can get a boost by pressing the square button. Go get them. I'm on it! Anyways, like I said, a lot of people seem to be having trouble with this minigame, but... Personally, I don't really see what the big fuss is. I mean, it would be... I mean, if you just use the nitro nitros whenever you take the corners, it, it's actually rather easy. <laughs> and I just ran over that dog back there. But anyways, uh, I... Like I said, I never really had a problem with this minigame at all in the slightest. Heck, it would... Heck, at least the the enemies here don't have rubber band AI! But anyways, if you keep taking these turns with the Nitro, you should be able to breeze through this. Well, just as long as the dogs don't keep taking your Nitro. And, and yes, they can take your Nitro boost away from you. So be careful of that. Cause, yeah. Yeah, the reason why I use the Nitro boost on the turns is because turns tend to slow you down a bit. The sharp ones. And if you use it there, it mitigates the slowing, slowing down and it helps you catch up to the rest of the competition. Too bad I've run out of the nitro things here and have to get around and to no should get negotiate this dog and his buggy. Okay. Eh. Woo! Okay. Ah, missed that nitro crate there. I don't think I might might be able to make this. Then again, there is only one car I have to circumvent. One that uh, plays music when I'm near it, and uh, missed another nitro. Come on, come on, make it, make it, make it, make it, make it. Oh, this is it. No, 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 ah, jeez. Fail. What the? <laughs> what the heck was that dog there doing? He just ran right into the back of me and just start pushing me forward but anyways I'm gonna try again meet you at the finish line whether I win or lose gonna start putting up a counter for these although uh, spoiler alert it's probably not gonna be that high ah, failed it again ah, once again the dog just just bumped into me <laughs> 10 car pile up well, more like a three car pile up. One, two, three. Anyways, uh, trying it again. And we made it! Way to go, Larry. Out of the way, three mariachi dies. And with that, we have our third treasure key for this area. <laughs> two missions with Murray. And, uh, and, uh, spoiler alert, this won't be the last time Murray has to help us through in the game. Anyways, n is, we're gonna have to cut it off right here. Next time on Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus, we're gonna try getting some more treasure keys from Mugshot's Turf, and hopefully it won't be left up to Murray. Flacker out! Just getting on with the, uh, with the Master Thief run for the rocky start.